we now understand the load curve completely and in this presentation we will talk about base load plants and peak load plants you can see the load curve on your screen the y axis is for the power in megawatt the x axis is for time in hour and you can see we are starting from 0 hour and we are ending at 24 hours this means this particular load curve is daily daily load curve we also have monthly load curves and yearly load curves but we mainly focus on daily load curves this is the variation of the load in 24 hours and we saw two terms in the load curve the first one was base load base load and the second one was peak load in this plot this one is the base load the base load we are calling this much of power as the base load because for 24 hours we need to supply at least this amount of power continuously because when you see at this time you will find this is the minimum load we need to transfer and after that the load will rise continuously but this is the minimum load the load does not goes lower than this therefore for 24 hours we need to supply at least this amount of load and we call it base load let's talk about the peak load this is the maximum load we need to supply in the 24 hours you can see peak here and corresponding to this peak we have peak load peak load and in between we have the intermediate cycling load intermediate cycling load we already discussed these things in the last lecture and now we will talk about base load plants and peak load plants let's start with base load plants base load plants so what are base load plants base load plants are the plants which are required to provide the power continuously they are used to provide the electrical power or supply the electrical power continuously and the first type of base load plant is thermal plant the second type is hydro plant the third one is nuclear power plant the fourth one is wind turbines and the fifth one is solar the sixth one is the runoff river runoff river i hope you must have heard about first to fifth type of plants the sixth one is new and in the coming presentations we are going to discuss all of these different plants so no need to worry about them they're working and what are they in this lecture we will try to discuss why we use them as base load plants but before that i will quickly write down what are peak load plants what are peak load plants hydropower plant we use as base load plant as well as peak load plant so the first thing is hydro plant the second one is pumped storage pumped storage i will explain what is pumped storage the third one is diesel plant the fourth one and the last one is the gas plant now let us try to understand why we use these power plants as peak load plants and these power plants as base load plants i will first talk about thermal power plant in thermal power plants we use coal to produce electricity we use coal to produce electricity and first we crush the coal into fine powder fine powder and this fine powder we then feed to boilers to produce the superheated steam the superheated steam the temperature of superheated steam is 540 degrees celsius after this 
the superheated steam is fed to turbine the turbine will then rotate and the electricity is produced because it is connected to the generator using the prime mover so this is the process in very short i have explained what we do in thermal power plants now you can notice one thing the temperature of superheated steam is very high 540 degrees celsius turbine is having the metal blades turbine is having the metal blades and if the metal blades are at normal temperature and you are feeding 540 degrees celsius superheated steam to turbine the metal blades will expand they are rotating and as well as they are expanding at the same time this will break the metal blades to avoid this we first heat the metal blades and then only we feed the superheated steam and this whole process takes 8 to 10 hours so this is what we are having in case of thermal power plant we require 8 to 10 hours to start the thermal power plant and same thing goes for the nuclear power plant as well the time is not exactly same because we don't have to crush the coal and make the fine powder we are using the radioactive materials and we are performing the nuclear fission and the heat produced in the nuclear fission is used to produce the superheated steam but we can say it requires time too so to satisfy the peak load you must know the timing of peak load 8 to 10 hours early so that you can start crushing the coal, heating the turbine blades, etc. to generate the power using the thermal power plant. So this is the reason we don't use thermal power plant to satisfy the peak load. For example, at this point you begin the process to start the thermal power plant and after 8 to 10 hours it starts to produce the electricity. And in this plot you can see the peak load is gone. So it is not able to satisfy the peak load, it is not able to meet the peak load demand. That's why we use thermal power plant and nuclear power plant as base load plants. Now we will talk about hydro power plant. Hydro power plant is used as base load plant as well as peak load plant. It is used as peak load plant because operating time from no load to full load is very low. Peak load plants are those plants whose operating point from no load to full load is very low. So in case of hydropower plant, we only need to open the valve. The water is stored, the potential energy of water we use to run the turbine. And if you open the valve, the water will flow through the turbine and electricity will be produced. So the process is very quick and because of this reason, we use hydropower plant as peak load plant. Now why we are using it as base load plant? It completely depend on the availability of the water if water is available, for example in rainy season, if water is available, you can use it as base load plant. You can use the stored water to run the turbine, to run the mill and you can produce the electricity from the excess water. And if the water is not available, then we don't use hydro power plant as base load plant. We use it as peak load plant. Now let's talk about wind and solar. Wind and solar we cannot control. We don't have control over the wind and we also don't have control over the sun. If there is no wind and if there are clouds, we cannot produce electricity efficiently from wind and solar. Therefore, we cannot use them as peak load plants. Because you can see in the plot, the base load is always there. The base load is always there for 24 hours, but peak load is not always there. And it is not important that during this time period, during this time period wind will be blowing or sun is there there may be cloud during this time so they are not reliable and because of this reason we don't use them as peak load plants and we use them as base load plants let's talk about a runoff river it may be a new thing for you but the process is very much similar to the hydro power plant instead of using the potential energy of stored water we simply use the flow of river I will quickly draw a simple diagram explaining the runoff river. Let's say this is the river and this river is flowing from top of the hill. We use penstock, 
we call this pipe penstock to get the water from the top and uh, there is a valve controlling the flow of the water and this water is then fed to the turbine or I will collect collectively write generator and then the power is produced and the used water the used water is then sent back to the flowing river so this is the simple operation of runoff river and we use runoff river as a base load plant now let's talk about peak load plants we have already completed the hydro plant diesel and gas plants are very easy to understand so I will not explain them I will focus on permed storage this is interesting power plant it is same as hydropower plant but there is one difference in case of hydropower plant what happens is that the used water is sent for the irrigation purpose we don't hold the used water the water coming out of turbine we don't hold it we simply give it for the irrigation purpose we give it to the farmers or for any other use and uh, we don't store them the simple thing but in case of pumped storage we don't give the water for any other use we simply store the water in a tank known as downstream tank and once the peak load period is gone once the peak load is gone it is usually the night time we pump the stored water back to the upstream tank i will explain the whole process using a simple video so that you can understand the pumped storage in great detail in this video you can see the upstream tank and the downstream tank during daytime when the peak load is there the water is fed to the turbine from the upstream tank and it is stored to the downstream tank after this when the night time comes when the peak load is gone during the night time we use the thermal power plant we use the nearby thermal power plant to run the generator as the motor the generator which was used to produce the power during the daytime is now used as motor by taking the electrical power from the nearby turbine you can see the arrow the electrical power is used to run the generator as the motor and the water in the downstream tank is then pumped to the upstream tank in this way we can store the water and this this thing is good when we don't have excess of water the water is limited so we can store the water in the downstream tank and we can use it again when the peak load comes so this is the process by which we produce electricity using the pumped storage so we have completed everything required to understand the base load plants and the peak load plants we know the reason why we are using these six plants as base load plants and why we are using these four plants as peak load plants so this is all for this lecture if you want to ask any question you may ask in the comment section